Yeah, hi everyone. Jason here, Robert Lawmiles Australia. Today we're going to take you through, um, you know, basically the steps in testing uh, your boundary wire for your robot lawnmower um, and understanding, you know, what different types of brakes really do mean for the robot and what stops the robot from working uh, and essentially really how to locate the brakes that might be difficult to find. Okay, so firstly we're going to start with the simple, the simple side of things and that is you know, this is the works Landroid base station here obviously and it's got the dreaded, dreaded red light. Um, so if you've got the light on, on your robot lawnmower, it could be any robot lawnmower, it doesn't have to be a works Landroid. Um, if you've got the, uh, the, the signal on your base station that says the wire is broken, um, then the first thing that you really want to do is you want to disconnect the wires from the base station and you want to test the, the resistance of the overall loop. It really is very important to know what it actually is you're looking for. So we're going to take both the wires out of the base station here like this. Bring them back over here. Now I've got here well, I've got the little uh, Nafoya uh, 5320 a multimeter. It is just a, a, a simple multimeter. Uh, we sell these online as well if you want to purchase them through us but they're just a very simple multimeter and all you want to do is you need to get a multimeter and you need to put it onto the ohm scale here which is resistance. So on this particular machine we put it to here and that's actually going to set to an auto sensing um, an auto sensing uh, function or an auto selecting function and it says on there at the moment if you can just see it says zero mega ohms on there at the moment uh, which essentially means it's open circuit it means that there's no circuit between the two probes of the uh, of the multimeter so what we want to do is we want to connect the multimeter probe to each of the wires and bear with me for the uh, for the camera here for a second because I don't have hands or a proper setup to do this today so I've connected the black wire to the wire that's going that way on our, on our wire loop and we're going to connect the red wire to the wire going the other way on the wire loop and then we're going to have a look at what the actual multimeter says now get some glare off there for you so that actually says 234 k ohms so 234 thousand ohms is what that's reading for so that k up in the top there is very very important um, if there's no K there, that means it's just ohms. If there's an M there, that means mil means um, uh, mega ohms, which is obviously millions of ohms. But currently, that is reading 231.6.7 um, K ohms, so 231,000 ohms, which is quite a high resistance. And when you're looking for a boundary wire break, the higher the resistance, the easier it is to find. Okay, so now that we know what we're looking for, we're actually looking, in this particular case, we're looking for something that's pretty much a complete break of the wire, or at least a break of the wire where the, where the, where the two wires are sitting in the ground, and we're probably measuring the resistance of the ground you know, in this particular case. So now we can put the multimeter to the side, we, we, know, we know what we're looking for, we can turn that off, um, and then we revert back to a, one of our cable locators. So I've got the, uh, the NF826 out here today, um, this is the meter that we actually use ourselves, um, you can also use the NF820. Both of these meters are again available on our website. Okay, and there's videos on how to use both of them on our website as well. Um, so the NF826, um, we've got the black wire connected to a ground stake, in which case it's just a screwdriver. And then we take the red wire and we connect it to the wire going in one direction. It doesn't really matter which direction it goes in, but just go in one direction. And we're going to connect it to there. Okay, so basically black wire to the ground stake, red wire to the, to the boundary wire. And the other end of the boundary wire must be disconnected. Don't leave it connected to the base station. Must must be disconnected. Okay. Then we're going to turn on our meter. Now, in this particular case, because we know it's a, a pretty much a break, uh, we could probably set the power level here. You can see this. The screen keeps turning off. If you can see this, uh, we want to set the power level probably probably to level two will be perfectly fine. So I'll set that to level two. Press OK, press the play button, so it's transmitting a signal. Grab our transmitter, turn our transmitter on. It can, it can stay on auto, it's fine. And you'll see that that's going to read around 300 straight away. Now because this is a reasonable, good, decent break, we should be able to just walk along um, and just walk along until the sound basically stops. Um, in this particular case, um, and whether you use the NF820 or the NF826, you'll really get the same outcome. So we're cruising along. It's still got signal there. My brake's actually in here because I've set this up obviously. But once we come along, sitting about 15 centimetres off the wire, we just go along and it goes past and stops. Okay? So there's no signal there. 
that there is a signal here. No signal there. Okay. You can actually you can sit here very carefully and go along. You'll actually find exactly so that's good got connection there, less connection there. You find our brake is right here. Okay, between the two two resistors here. So that's a simple, like I said, if you've got an actual brake in the wire, really quite simple to find. Nothing nothing too difficult at all. So what I'll do is I'll turn this back off again and we'll set ourselves up for next one. I'm going to join these two resistors here together and I'll talk to you about what I'm actually trying to achieve. Okay, so I've joined those resistors back together. So what I've got here um, is that I've actually joined seven uh, 1,000 ohm resistors in a row. So we've got 7,000 ohms across here. And that's going to simulate just a bad joint, not such a break, just a bad joint. And I'll show you why in just a moment. So back over to essentially where we started from and we're going to obviously, if this was still connected, we, we disconnected out of the base station and we're going to go along and we're going to test with the multimeter again. So we're going to put this onto the ohm scale again and we're going to connect one lead, one, one, sort of, one side of your boundary wire to one side, which is the black wire there. I've just connected the black wire to the black lead going that way. And we're going to test the red lead to the other direction here. So we've got the other side here. And then we're going to read what it actually says on the meter. Now, so now it's coming up with seven, basically seven K ohms, which is 7,000 ohms, okay? Now, 7,000 ohms is around about the resistance where I believe it's sort of easy to find if it's more than 7,000 ohms, and it's quite difficult to find if it's less than 7,000 ohms. And the less the, the, the less the resistance, the harder the uh, the break is to find. So, if you're trying to find a, uh, a break in the wire that's only 500 or 1,000 ohms, it really is quite difficult. Okay, but we know we're looking for a, a 7,000 ohm break here now. Okay. Again, we can put the multimeter to the side. We know what the resistance is. We know what we're looking for. And again, we take our NF826, connect it up. And we've disconnected the other wire. Then we connect that to there. So we've got our NF826 connected along this way. And the other end of the wire going to the base station is disconnected and not touching the ground. And then we'll come across back to our transmitter. And this time we're going to set the level I'm going to set the level down to, down to 1 this time, okay, so we can take that level, take it down to the, to the lowest level, and hit the setting, and then hit transmit, okay, now it's transmitting, come back to our receiver, turn it on, and I tend to leave this in auto, you can, you can use the manual settings, but I tend to leave it in auto, so while we're close to there, it's obviously going to beep, we're going to come along, and obviously every now and then, it's going to come down, and you're going to test where it is, and that's got a reading of 300, so this is where the NF826 sort of comes into its own, uh, where you can actually take readings. Um, so it's 300, 305 there. Keep going along. Follow your boundary wire all the way around. It's 305 there. Just every 10 or 20 metres. You can even just go halfway each time and then work your way back. And we'll go over to here. And you can see, ah, that's only 249. Okay, so... That's basically telling me that we've had a significant drop in the signal between you know, basically over there somewhere through here to here, which indicates to me that the problem is generally going to be inside that spot. Okay, now if it doesn't, if it, once again, if you have a resistance that's only around a thousand ohms that you can call, this difference in readings is going to be subtle. Um, you really are looking for, you know, basically go, I, I generally what I do in that case is I go almost a systematic every 20 meters and I actually step it out. So I go about every 20 meters and I take a reading and I write it down. 20 meters, take a reading, write it down. 20 meters, take a reading, write it down, okay? And then you can look at all those numbers and, uh, and look at which one is not basically in line with the, uh, with the, with the, with the sequence as you go along. Because if you've got a really long wire, um, the, the signal reading will slowly go down. So by the time you start, if you've got a 300 meter wire, when you first start, you'll be getting a signal of 300. When you get to the other end, you might be getting a signal reading you know, of 250 or something like that. So there, it, it is going to drop around 50 ohms, oh, sorry, about 50 readings uh, on this um, on this, this, the receiver. So you're sort of looking for a space in your boundary wire where the signal readings dropped a little bit more than you'd expect comparable to the other 20 meter marks, okay? In this particular case, 7,000 ohms, not really that difficult to find. You know, I've gone every five meters or so and come up, come across, and of course we've had the reading, 
uh, that was you know, 300 and 305 or so here. So it's going up to 300, 300, 200, 285. So now they got 305. To the other side, that back to 200, 248 on the other side. Okay. So I can tell that there is definitely an issue between here and here. And the issue, of course, is these seven resistors that I've got in here. With the NF62826, uh, you can also sort of see, you know, basically the difference between every resistor. And I'm just trying to show you here if you can see the, see the reading. You can just sort of reading that down. Okay, so that's 305, 270, 280, 260, 200, it's going back up to 270 there, 280, 270. 235, 40, and 235, 40. So you can sort of see that as it goes along the resistance, it actually does drop down further and further. Okay. So when you have a when you have a break in your wire that is not you know, greater than 7,000 ohms, um, then you really do have to you know, think about exactly how it is you're going to find it. Now, of course, the one thing that you can do with most most wire installations is that you can always go halfway basically so you can you can take from your base station pick a point that's exactly halfway in your installation say over here somewhere on, on this one there's obviously only a very small installation here but if you've got 300 meters of boundary wire pick a spot that's you know halfway and actually get a new piece of wire run it from that halfway point back to your base station um, and then that gives you the ability to actually test you know the let the, the right hand side of your loop and then the and then the left hand side of your loop independently from each other um, and we'll take another video one day on exactly how to do that. Um, but if you can separate into two separate areas, you can get a much better idea. Okay. So, look, the only last thing I do, do, do want to talk about is that obviously in this particular scenario that I've set up here, um, obviously I know where the break is. It's all very easy to find. Um, and I've got all my resistance all in one spot. But what if you still had 7,000 ohms resistance of the entire loop? But the reason you had 7,000 ohms is because you had seven individual you know, resistive joints around the place. And it was, a, it was actually a combination of all the joints that actually, that actually adds up to 7,000 ohms. Okay? So in that particular case, that is where I definitely recommend that you actually run a wire halfway and, actually, and separate your, your yard into two separate zones. Uh, so you can take, take, so take an extra wire from here halfway and then connect it to the, to the wire going that way. So you've only got half your loop connected. Um, do the same thing that I just that I just mentioned before and run out every 20 meters take a reading Write it down 20 meters take a reading write it down 20 meters take a reading write it down um, And then look at the numbers and see if there's any sort of sequence along the way that doesn't quite look right And that's where you start looking okay It can be very difficult. I know there's a lot of frustration when it comes to uh, to to uh, fixing and repairing boundary wires um, but once you sort of understand exactly is how to look at it uh, how to look for it, it can be quite simple, and particularly when you've got um, you know, really high resistance. Um, again, I can't emphasize enough about the multimeter. Um, using a multimeter to understand what your overall resistance is before you even start looking really is very important. Um, because, if, like I said, if you're looking for, if you're looking for, uh, for a you know, 20, 40, 20 to 30,000 or 40,000 ohm resistance, uh, uh, resistance then it's very very easy to find. You don't have to put much effort into it. You can just put them, set the meter to uh, you know, to the to the number two setting and walk along and find the break. Very very simple. But if it is going to be less than seven thousand ohms, um, then that's where you start have to really start thinking about. Okay, we need to need to really um, sort of prepare yourself for how difficult it might be to find the break. So that's it for this video. Um, so we'll take other videos in this in this line of uh, how to test boundary wires. Um, but that's it for this one. So if you've got any questions please flick us an email at sales at robotlawmowers.com.au um, You can message us through our website. Uh, just go to www.robotlawmowers.com.au um, and you can find us on Facebook. So just search for Robot Lawmowers Australia on Facebook. Thanks for watching.